Deadlights Pod. Deadlights Pod. Welcome to the Deadlights Podcast. I'm your host Sam, <laughs> and I'm your other host Leslie. And um, <laughs> who do we have here today? We have May. Hi. Welcome, May, to the Deadlight Space. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Of course, we've been wanting to get you in here for a while, so. What a way to kick off. You're our first guest in the, in the third season. Ooh, so that's exciting. It's a good way to kick it off. Um, and I think that it was actually perfect that we all watched a movie that we had never seen before. None of us. Correct. None of us had seen this movie. Sometimes those are the best. <laughs> Sometimes it goes on the other direction. Um, <laughs> what other direction is there? I only see good movies. <laughs> this movie took us in. A direction, that's for sure. Yes. Many, many actually. Uh Yeah, many directions. Sometimes at the same time. Sometimes (laughs) overlapping. Yes. They were going, they were trying to go in many directions. Yes. Many times. Um, And what did we just watch? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Beyond the Door? We watched Beyond the Door from 1974, directed by... O. Elman. E. R. Barrett. Written by those guys, plus... (laughs) Antonio Troiso, Giorgio Marini, Aldo Crudo, Alex Rebar, Christopher Cruz, e Sonia Molteni. Juliet Mills plays a young pregnant woman in San Francisco who is going to have the devil's baby during her strange possession. Richard Johnson shows up to help her, but what does he really want? Did they just say the actors' names in the logline? Apparently. Yeah. Because that weren't those were not their names in the no. no her, I think her name was Jessica, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was Jessica and Dimitri. Dimitri. Yeah, yeah, Dimitri. What the? Okay. And okay. The well, weirdness starts with the log line. I was yes. gonna movie. say, what a testament to what we watch. Yeah, I I would say that's a very reductive way to describe it, and also I was unclear if it was the devil's baby or the devil manifesting as a baby or like the opposite of the Virgin Mary thing where like mm-hmm. it's God and also God's baby. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't get religion. The, no. the, the Holy trio. The, the Holy, holy trio. trio. <laughs> no, we're the Holy trio coming at you. That's what this, that's what this group can be called Let's right here. I, yeah. The holy trio. Let's take the Virgin Mary. Who's I'll the take Virgin her. Mary? <laughs> I'll take her. Why not? Love um, but yes, it, this movie, just general thoughts about it, was definitely something I had never seen before. Correct. I'll give it that. Yeah. Um, but in a story that we have seen before, right. and mm-hmm. like direct ripoffs of oh, yeah. a lot of possession movies, and specifically The Exorcist, which came out a year before. Yeah, a year before. So we're getting a weird mixture. And let's throw on top the Italian Giallo-esque kind of style of filmmaking that they're playing with. Yeah, there were definitely some elements of Giallo in there, which was strange for what the movie was actually doing story-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It didn't really match up with what Giallo actually is. Right. Because there was no big twist at the end puzzle that you're trying to put together. Right. But they were doing everything else about Giallo movies. um, Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so. It would have been great if the the son at the end had been like putting on black gloves. <laughs> then it would have been a true giallo. True, yeah. Even like crossover with other giallo. Oh maybe. yeah. Um, all right. Well, why don't we just get into this crazy ride that is beyond the door slash the devil within her slash Please. many other titles I'm sure um, <laughs> with the can. This is our filmmaking category. <laughs> um, a lot I feel like to digest in the can section of this critique Mm -hmm. absolutely because there was a lot going on Mm -hmm. from the start and honestly there were multiple times we were questioning whether the audio and video were even mashed together because (laughs) they were so not matched (laughs) together i i think the movie starting out with a full minute of blackness with narration and by blackness i mean black screen black screen yeah Uh, And then the video popped in and the narration didn't change. It was just still going. And then all this weird stuff started coming up. And it was like, what did they do here? Of course, you won't actually see me. Unfortunately, in recent centuries, that has gone out of fashion. 
Although there was a time when I was always being painted or impersonated in one way or another. It made yes. me question just the quality of the of the film in general, um, or <laughs> your laptop my connection i was just like <laughs> questioning all the externities first yeah as opposed to the film because i was like there's no way it's a film this is too odd it's yeah. too why would we do this why i know right. it's the 70s but why i don't they're I... really throwing it all in there i mean it was and that <laughs> first two minutes really set up exactly what the rest of the film was going to be like we had crazy edits we had voiceovers we had freeze overlays, frames freeze frames and that's really what the rest of the movie was it definitely didn't set the tone right though no, no. because the the tone in that opening narration is like playful and mischievous and so i thought it was gonna have like some fun or funny elements to it and it does not. It took no. itself very seriously. Oh, for sure. It made me feel as if there were... How many names did you name? Seven? It really felt like it was made That's by seven list. different <laughs> people. Like, they all had different scenes they had written and envisioned. And uh, no one said, you know, this doesn't fit the last scene that I made. No. They were all just like, oh, cool. Yeah, you made something fun. All right, let's piece it together. Yeah, almost like, like an exquisite corpse project or mm -hmm. something. It's like they went to an all-you-can-eat buffet. Mm -hmm. Just because it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, it doesn't mean that you should load your plate with all. Yeah, you don't really want to eat jello on top of your mashed potatoes. I, I mean, if you do, <laughs> no judgment. I wouldn't do it. And lastly, Campbell's noodle soup. Oh, of, of course. course. Uh, it was a noodle. It was green peas. I think oh, I multiple okay. Times. I saw the chicken noodle soup and the green pea. Okay. They got to switch it up. How do you... He kept drinking it with a straw. How do you suck the pieces of chicken through the straw? You need like a boba straw. And I don't think those yeah. existed in the 70s in San Francisco. They, they did not. He was sucking really hard. <laughs> Going back to like this amount of writers that we have on here, it really felt like 10 people went and saw The Exorcist and all brought their favorite parts from it. Mm -hmm. And we're like, let's all let's put all this in the movie yeah. and completely forget about, you know, a story yeah. or anything like that. The story <laughs> was very lightly a woman is possessed or having the devil's child and this guy's coming to make sure it's, it's going to happen so he can live 10 more years. That's pretty much what is going on. <laughs> but then it's filled with all these just wacky, wild, Whack. filmic, cinematic experiments that's there, going on. There was a lot of music video editing. was much logic involved in this movie and i i think that's exemplified in that scene when the guy is following him around playing a nose flea no one will help you i like the music separate from the film music was yeah. Good. yeah i th i thought it was fun it was funky but then it just like set a tone that just like didn't match all the other ones. Right. It just matched the other scenes that had the music in it. Yeah. And then that in itself was all one solid movie. Yeah. Uh, like just confusing. I was just confused as to what I should feel. Like there was <laughs> moments where I felt like we were having a dialogue scene go on and then we have like the man following him or something. It's it's them pairing dialogue scenes with also these like experimental filmmaking techniques, which then distracts from the dialogue scene. And then I'm confused which one I should pay attention to. Right. 
And then I can't pay attention to either one. So then I just lose the information and I'm confused. Modern biology attributes to certain psychic phenomena, which it is unable rationally to explain, the power to create severe physical disturbances in the patient. So violent that they interfere with the cerebral equilibrium. Let's, uh, let's get to the meat of this thing. Let's do it. What this movie is actually trying to say. What are the... <laughs> I feel like we're really going to be stretching in this one a little bit. Um, besides wanting to desperately be the exorcist. <laughs> They're really saying that. And Rosemary's baby <laughs> at the same time. It was just, what is it trying to say? What? I mean, I mean, you got me. <laughs> I, I struggled to pull things out of it, but... At least at the beginning, when we have that like crazy dream esque sequence with Dimitri. Do you want these few remaining days? Very well, I'll give them to you. But you must use them for my purposes. If you succeed in bringing the child to birth, if you succeed in ripping it out of that woman, maybe I'll let you live for a few more years. Is this going to be about like what you do to like have more time in life like what are you willing to do and sacrifice just right. like a little more time um but they didn't really go anywhere with that no it no. was just kind of like the villain that was looming the whole time and it was like the ex-boyfriend right uh, who was supposedly dead after the death we never heard any more of her whose death his death he died many years ago there was that whole speech that the lady sitting on her houseboat smoke and weed gave about like essentially time travel i know many people who were able to go back into the past and some who were able to come back into the present but you would never believe such things and so it was like dimitri got pulled out of time right before his car accident and like came into the future failed at this and that's why at the end you see the car finally splash into the ocean because that was one of our weird freeze frames, but that one just stayed frozen. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the point too, I think you're right. Yes, he was like plucked out of time to see if he could do it, but he also did succeed because the baby was born and through one of the many Vincent Price <laughs> voiceovers, I think as the devil, she said... I was never going to let you live anyway. Did you really think I would save your miserable life? <laughs> I never intended to let you live. I did it for my amusement. <laughs> right. So even if he succeeded or failed, it didn't matter because the devil was going to send him back to that car crash moment anyway and just take him off the yep, side. I like guess. that little boy did at the end. Yeah. Um, but very yeah. thriller, thriller of him to also just very thrill turn around and have <laughs> yellow eyes. Very true. <laughs> that, was, that was another element, like kind of going into the meat, because we had like creepy kids was something that they were playing with. They were kind of being haunted by the devil that was haunting or possessing their mom. Try rocking it. It's like a swing, swing high, swing low. We have bad dads, really bad dads. <laughs> she was a pretty bad mom, too. Yeah. Really one, bad. Once she parents. was possessed, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that the kids called them by their first names, Jessica and Robert, mm -hmm. instead of mom and dad, that would, that's kind of and strange. Hey, Jessica, it's ready for the oven. Trust Robert to make a whole big scene over a little lousy fever. If you just look at the pod story, I'd be dad. There was some child. Ugh. Yeah. Mom growing up, doing grown up things way earlier than you should. I'm trying to put it as best as I possibly can. The mom kissed her sick. like 10 year old son on the lips for Ugh. way too long. 10 year old? No, the child was like probably five. The mom and dad weren't doing anything. No. She was like raising that child. It kind of seemed like. Yeah. It. And also, the dad was like saying the worst things ever to oh both the mom and the children. Yeah. Stop. No, no, no. It's got about as much balls as a castrated jellyfish. And Charlie, you're coming in all wrong. After all, I'm an artist. I could be screwing every girl in San Francisco. You're not going to tell me that you consider yourself so irresistible. If I'd ever thought a thing like that, I certainly wouldn't have married you. 
Fish, you know, have remarkable qualities. They're silent, clean, take up very little space. Don't you realize what my name's given to me? Oh, yes. Sweetness, deplorable romanticism, and one hell of a great ass. Like, okay, so when the mom became possessed, I was like, okay, now are we turning to, like, what will a mother do to protect her child? Right. Like, this this devil being born, uh, like, still she wants to have the child. But then they put her in a room and pretty much forget about her character for a good part of this movie at oh, the end. yeah. It's just the dudes walking around being like, we gotta make sure this baby gets born. Yeah, but not only that, but they're, like, um, arguing. Demetrius is like... I know exactly what to do. I'm like, I can take care of her and blah, blah, blah. And I'm the devil baby expert. Yeah, I, I will <laughs> take, I'll make sure that this baby is born. And then freaking robbers over there being like, you take it to the husband. Okay, no. <laughs> I believe you, Demetrius. Jessica needs my help. My help, you understand? There's no one else who can help her. I. I'm the only one who can help her. Believe me. Please, Robert, go away. No, no, don't come in here. Leave me alone with him, please. And it's just like, how? When? Right. Like, he was won over so easily with very little persuasion. It was very confusing. Uh And and then you got George, who's just trying to help. And Robert's basically like, fuck off. Fuck off, doctor. It's my duty to stop you placing Jessica and the child's safety in the hands of some crazy quack. You can't stop me from doing anything, George. (laughs) And yeah, he had his own little side story for a second, too, at the end when he went and, like, (laughs) talked to that high boat woman who has, like, some experience with Beyond. I don't know. Well, it seems like she knew them. Back when Jessica and Dimitri were together? Yes, he was a very strange man. But with exceptional powers. I don't believe in those things. Yet you're here for an explanation. He maybe has a little more to do with, like, devil worshipping than we thought or something? I I don't know. Yeah. It became kind of this, like, science versus magic moment because it's the doctor going to, like, investigate Something that's beyond his comprehension. <laughs> and I was like, okay, another loose end here that suddenly is he the main character? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We switched. We Dropping definitely more switched. threads than worms. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that that kind of leads well into the cook, how they actually present these themes. And we kind of, I feel like, have got to cross our feelings about that. They yeah. don't really at all. They they start no. things and don't really follow through no. with it. No, not at all. It's all just, you know, when you break a mirror and then you're trying to like put all the pieces together and you're like, ah, that's how it fits. Yeah. You get a new mirror. Yeah. But then it doesn't make sense. No. Because then it's all distorted. Like your face is distorted. And it's like, in this case, with this amount of writers, it's like they broke the mirror and then every hour they switched in a new person to try <laughs> to put it together. <laughs> like they, there's just like no organization of like, the storyline, really. Not right. at all. You or, know, it's like the mirror broke and so did some other stuff. So you're trying to just like shove non-mirror glass materials into it. Yeah. So it's like mirror, mirror, and then, you know, stained glass. And then mirror, mirror, crushed up cookie. Ooh. Yep. Yum. <laughs> yeah, that we really are beating that mirror. Uh, <laughs> it's a good metaphor. analogy. Yeah, metaphor to death, but I like it. I just wanted to say, too, I, I know we like harped on this already but just like the tone of it it just really frustrated me because you know another director that i like and i think is fucking bananas is david lynch Mm -hmm. um removes things add things mixes things and it's confusing but it all has at least the same tone you're in the same universe right this movie didn't keep you in the same universe because then you have some person doing a flute nose thing and then you're walking <laughs> down the sidewalk and nothing is happening and you're just like, okay, we're still in this, you know? But then we go back and then it's The Exorcist. Like, 
just so was so confusing. <laughs> yes, because like we've seen experimental movies, like very experimental movies on this podcast before. And I feel like the ones that don't work don't commit 100% to being experimental. Like we don't need to have like this big complete storyline but there does have to be like a thought i feel like in the movie like it can't just be experimental to be experimental Mm -hmm. and that's where the movie just kind of got exhausting at the beginning i was like okay this is interesting i'm keeping with it of like you know they're playing with a lot of things i can get into that but by the end it just like there was no purpose to it so then it became exhausting to watch and try to figure out what was going on right and I will say it did make good fodder for riffing. We all got oh, some really sure. good jokes in we there. We did. We we, we good all licks. screamed at one point in abject horror, but not because something was scary, just because it was horrible. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. we've already touched on a couple times. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, overall as a viewing experience, it was fun. Right. But not for the reasons it should Mm -hmm. have been not what it was intending no and this is a thing about doing not only this podcast but just like watching movies we were touching about it touching about it touching (laughs) whoa (laughs) 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 um we were touching on it before we started filming um that you know Watching movies with people is just oh, it makes the experience so much better, um, you know, and it makes maybe perhaps a bad movie. Not that I'm judging in, in this movie yet. Um, we're not there yet, <laughs> but uh, makes terrible movies enjoyable. All right, let's get to uh, the thrill. Yeah. Let's get to the actual scariness of this movie. Um, hmm. uh, so we got a devil, we got a possession. Yeah. That's, I think really where they're putting most of their eggs in the horror basket. This is a possession movie. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the, I, I I do want to maybe trail back to the cook a little bit that I want to say the actress, Jessica, well, Jessica's well, a character. Actually, What's her the name? The actress is in the is log Jill. line. Julia Mills. Julia Mills. Julia Mills. Um, once she like got, you know, that special effect makeup and she was acting possessed, I thought she was pretty convincing. She was, you know, scary in the sense that like I hated the vomit and she was like <laughs> licking her fingers. Plunge your hands into her. Plunge your hands into her so that you may live. <gasps> the progression of her going to that demonic state, you know, it was there too. Like she became a very aggressive mother. Not that she was a good mother to begin with, <laughs> but she slapped her kid and Oof. then made out with her son. And killed those goldfish. And killed those goldfish. Oh, that was like the first moment of weirdness. The scene where the kids are in their bedroom and all the dolls start like coming to life and the room starts shaking around and it's lit up from below. That was actually pretty scary. Yeah. And I think that whole sequence was really well done. There there were all these overhead shots as well Mm -hmm. when the kids were walking around in the room and all that stuff was happening and they were they were disorienting but in a way that felt effective for the Mm -hmm. scene and i i feel like that set piece was definitely the most effective part of the movie and the most like technically proficient part of the movie that felt like rather than experimental filmmaking that doesn't succeed that felt more like very successful straightforward filmmaking Mm -hmm. yeah horror filmmaking yeah yeah they were able to really heighten the tension in that scene and dolls are creepy too like and kids are creepy so they're really playing on those like visual elements well and i think you know there were a couple sequences in this movie that we can point to and be like that was creepy or that was you know at least an interesting done sequence um that was effective 
but it's kind of sandwiched with a lot of other things that are mm-hmm. not effective. Correct. Which then takes away from the things that are, unfortunately. Yes. What? But it's like, yeah, they nailed it on a couple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm so happy that you mentioned this sequence because um, I definitely really enjoyed that part. If there's any part that I enjoyed, I think that was it. Yeah. Um, but to me, I guess because of the movies that I've seen as of, you know, now, um, that to me reads more of either alien or just like possession of ghost as opposed to demon. Mm-hmm. Just because the way that the floorboarding was is that all the split um, like wood um, had a good like half inch and then there was light coming from underneath. Right. So to me, that reads very much of just alien-esque and especially that overhead looking down right excuse me and then the whole house was shifting and then we i mean we see that in other sequences as well with dimitri's right. like he was making out with himself the mirror part yeah but then i don't understand then if the demon has control if like is first of all Demon in the baby or demon in general, like in the house. Right. It, like. Yeah. It's like if you look at the exorcist, Reagan only really has control over things in her general proximity mm-hmm. when she's possessed. She can't affect the whole house the same way. It, right. Right. I mean, no. I, yeah, I, no. I the guess... bed and stuff, but she's attached to the bed. Right. In this, in with this demon, it's like it extends further. It's now the house. It's now the child, the children. N- now it wants to attack the children. It wants to attack, you know, the men in her life. We, we need to throw a rule book at this demon and be like, hey, stay in your lane, buddy. Yeah, yeah brother. What, what are you doing? You're, you're taking good jobs away from ghosts and aliens. Yeah. Okay? You're taking on a lot here, man. <laughs> um, yeah, because you're right. It was very confusing as to what parameters the, the this, rules to yeah. this thing was was it a ghost was it a demon was the demon in the baby because then at the end after she had the baby she looked fine right mm-hmm. finer um <laughs> and so that to me implies that the demon was in the baby but mm-hmm. isn't the little kid we see at the end ken the already existing son Right. So then did the demon po- is the demon now possessing the son? Right. And if that's the case, where the hell is the baby? Yeah, where's the baby with no mouth? The baby with no mouth. What was, that, what was that all about? Ugh. No mouth. It was like, because there were elements of Rosemary's baby in this movie. I've never seen it. You never see the baby. But that, it, it then makes you in your mind really build up what the baby looks like. Right. Whereas in this movie, it felt like they were trying to do that too. Like you're thinking, okay, what's the devil's baby going to look like? And then they felt like they needed to show it. So they're like, right. what are we going to do to make this look fucking crazy? No Lazy mouth. His mouth. No mouth. <laughs> no mouth. Sleeping baby with no mouth. Was it sleeping or was it dead? Right. That's what I didn't know either. I, I mean, like, I don't remember seeing a baby on the boat with them at the end. No. Nope. So I'm assuming it was dead. Yeah. So like, it's like the baby was born and then the demon immediately went into Ken. Or, hear me out, new theory coming in. (laughs) Um, What if, just because also we, we plugged Dimitri's from the previous timeline. Right. Could we have done that with a little child? With uh, the already existing child? I, I, I guess? I don't know. Because the children not were not in the movie for a while. Right. They were taken out. They were like at that secretary's, nanny's. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Friend's yeah, house. Like, right. So they weren't in the movie. So maybe... Just because everything's all whack. Um, they had the daughter, and this was 
the little the little kid. So you're saying that the little kid was reborn as that baby? Because the kid had a mouth at the end. Yeah. And also it wasn't that long after because she still had like scars on her face. I feel like we're trying well, to get to make yeah. sense out of something that I was makes gonna say, no sense. This, I mean, that could have happened. Like that yeah, I feel like true. is a very, it's a possibility because <laughs> who knows what the fuck this movie's trying Look, to say. Look, we said that we were going to reach and I reached. Reaching. You did. Good reaching. job. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you very much. You, you were you stretch arm strong there. Oh yeah, I was oh, like, yeah. mm. Let's get to uh, the last category, which is the ride, which is kind of nice. interesting with this movie. We kind of already mentioned, yeah, pretty garbage movie right but we had fun oh for sure it was like entertaining to watch yeah and to yes. watch with other people yeah for sure uh was that their intentions of us laughing at it probably not no but that's what kind of art can be about sometimes though yes. you know it brings us joy in different ways whether it's the way that it intended to or not so that's I guess we can kind of give the film that. We had yep. fun. We had fun. <laughs> For sure. We did. And it yeah. did spark sequels. There are sequels of Beyond what? the Door. Oh, nice. Um, I've only seen Beyond the Door 3, which is not at all like <laughs> this movie because they, it has to do with people on a train and there's like someone being pursued on the train. I don't know, but I've seen it and I still don't know what it really is about. Um, was it called Beyond the Door 3, The Refinishing? The Refinishing. It was actually a different movie completely. It was called like One Terrible Night on a Train or something. But then because they thought it would sell better as a Beyond the Door movie, they just slapped that title on it what? retroactively. It's so to sell weird it. when they do stuff like that. Yeah. What? And I'm not sure what the second one is, but maybe it was kind of like that situation too. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I I think I read something about Deep Red being marketed in Japan as Suspiria 2 or something like that. Hmm. <laughs> they just think it can sell better there? They just, People will recognize the name and be like, ooh, we got to go see that. I, I don't know. And I don't, don't quote me on that. I may have it wrong. But I, I remember reading that about some Argento movie where – you know, one one of his movies did really well in a certain territory, so they released another one of his movies pretending it was the sequel just so people would go see it. Distributing's weird. It really is. Distributing is weird. That's catfishing. <laughs> you fooled us. <laughs> you fuckers. This is not what I wanted to see. <laughs> God damn, I thought I was going to see Beyond the Door 3. <laughs> so, um... You don't really look like your dating profile, <laughs> mm-hmm. but Very saying much. it to a VHS cover. Yeah, you're just like, um, uh. <laughs> oh, now I want to make a dating app for like horror nerds and VHS collectors and stuff. I, I think, feel yeah. like. There would be a good. I think that would be very yeah. There's a large crossover of those two groups of people. Yeah. What what was the? There was something in trivia back in September. Was it Demon Hole? Demon Hole. That's a movie. Yeah. Uh, My the group I was with, we joked that that's what. uh, It's basically Grinder, but in hell. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I just got on Demon Hole, guys. Hey, nice. (laughs) You're getting back out there. Yeah. Hey, I don't have anything else to do in hell, so... Look, um, as an active member of Bubble Bumble BFF, the amount of people who are just like into witchy stuff, um, horror, I'm just like, I think we should just develop a whole new app oh, for these sure. folks. Get them all on Demon Hole. Yeah, hey, it's like I said earlier, if someone doesn't like horror... I don't really want to date them or be friends with them if, because it's 90% of my life. If you're not going to be a little weird and a little yeah. into what I'm into, you know, I'm just in that spot in my life. Absolutely. They say opposites attract and I reject that statement. <laughs> not in the horror case. Not at all. No. No. Um, all right. Wow. Beyond the door. Huh? 1974. <laughs> wow. Let's get to the Smash Pumpkin right yeah. Um oh, Out of five Smash Pumpkins. May, would you like to to start? How many smashed pumpkins do you think this thing's got? I will give it two smashed pumpkins this out of five. Pumpkin. I think that it's entertaining. I think there are some aspects of it that are creative and interesting. Like I said, there's a few moments of genuinely good filmmaking. 
but I think it trips over itself. It takes yeah. itself too seriously for what it's actually doing. It definitely has that like college film student feel in some of its more experimental moments. And, you know, I, I have learned to not care about the dubbing in Italian made films from the seventies mm-hmm. because they recorded without sound on set so that it could be localized for different territories more easily. So I don't begrudge it that. And it almost brings you into this other world, really otherworldly reality where you can just kind of be like, okay, this is just how this is. And it, allows you to be more immersed in the weirdness of it and the kind Mm -hmm. of uncanny feeling you get from it. So I think all of that mixed together, plus the fact that we just had such a fun time watching it. Yeah. Two, two out of five. Nice. Leslie, do you have one or don't? I do. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Are you you sure? You have one or (laughs) Well, it just broke for a second. You sure down. about that? Um, no, your podcast didn't just pause. It just, <laughs> just tripped out for a second. No, just dub it. You're just running through the film in your head for a moment. I just... was. I was. I definitely was. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give this a what? One. Oh, yeah. Harsh. Um. Yeah, just because, yes, I enjoyed it. I think that's it. And then that one sequence um, of the what we've talked about, the children in the bedroom. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know much about how Hollywood or in general, how movies are made and the timeliness or coincidences of two movies coming out at the same time. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of just like, wars that happen in between um writers and stuff so they go and make their own movie perhaps so um i don't know if i enjoy seeing the same themes or you know like it was really trying to be the exorcist and i find the exorcist to be a very successfully made movie it was it was well done, and this one was not. <laughs> um, it confused the hell out of me, but we did have fun, like you mentioned. I think that holds testament to just like we said before, it's really hard to make a movie. Yeah. And at least they did it. <laughs> they did it. They, they sure did. They did it. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. I mean, we talked about it last week, too, with... Um, with creature, you know, it's hard when you put yourself and you almost do a disservice to yourself when you really put yourself against another really successful movie around the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, inherently we're going to compare those movies. So in that way, I do agree with you and it wasn't as successful. Um, but I do feel like I lean more on appreciating them trying things Yes, most of it wasn't successful, but some of it was. Some of it was cool and things that I had never seen before. Um, And that is what I like Giallo, uh, about Giallo a lot, is they're willing to try these kind of more experimental film techniques while also pulling together a good story. This movie was a lot of loose threads, but, you know, they were going for that. You know, you can still make a functional piece of clothing by you know grabbing other pieces of clothes um or a mirror that is made out of cookies and yeah back to that mirror thing ah man but like yeah <laughs> want cookies there's an art to experimenting you're not just fucking throwing it out there and if you are throwing it out there you might be more complex than you think that that like what i'm trying to say is that you might be making more sense than you think you think you you think? I think. Cool. <laughs> All that being said, I'm going to give this movie a two as well. I had a good time watching it with y'all and um, appreciated some of those more successful experimental mm-hmm. moments. So, Beyond the Door, 1974. Beyond the Door. Uh, 
why don't we see what we're watching next week, shall we? Woo! May, as the guest, you get to pull the movie. There's a lot in there. So yeah, feel free so. to dig in, um, whatever you want. And how we do it is read the log line first, and we're going to try to guess what it is. Um, oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> The, I mean, you're going to know what this is right away, but the cool. fact that I pulled this movie no. out of that bucket. No, I'm excited. Angela Baker, a shy, traumatized wow. young girl, is sent to summer camp with her cousin. Shortly after her arrival, anyone with sinister or less than honorable intentions toward her gets their comeuppance. And this is... The Notorious Sleepaway Camp. Cracked. Directed by Robert Hilt- Hiltzik from 1983. And for for listeners, uh, this is hilarious to me because I myself am a trans woman. And I have very complex feelings about this movie. In general, I love it. But I personally think she should have burned the whole camp down. Because yeah. everyone there, except like two people, were pieces of shit. We can also throw her aunt or mom oh my god her at the aunt. beginning in there too yeah her we could throw her in the fire like, yeah sorry spoiler alert i don't think leslie's ever seen this movie. no sleep away oh. camp oh, is it okay. like for forget i said anything yeah. per, ah. per, per, pretend ah. pretend you heard nothing you won't remember any of this by the next week oh yeah. you you We're know it <laughs> all right wow it's like i said a pretty notorious horror film and um Glad we're able to review it on this podcast. Hell Thank you, May, yeah. so much for pulling it, first of all. Yes. And also for being here and enjoying Beyond the Door with us. This was great for having me. Absolutely. This was amazing. And man. And you have your own podcast, too. I do. Yeah. So besides editing several podcasts, Halloweenies and Talk Scary to Me, I am a co-host and editor of The Lady Killers, a feminine rage podcast available on Bloody FM with other fine podcasts. And our, I, I don't know how soon this episode is dropping for y'all. I think this one will come out probably around February or March. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. You record way further ahead of time mm-hmm. than we do. We're, we're only about a month ahead of time. Gotcha. So by the time you hear this, we'll have quite a few episodes out because in December we switched to weekly and we're having a lot of fun and, you know, people seem to like what we're doing. We're filling a niche, niche, niche that I like that a niche. no one else seems to be doing where we're, we're talking about these films from the perspective of whether or not we can empathize with mm. female identifying killers. Mm. You know, we one of the sections is die for me. And it's when Ooh. we talk about would we die for her? And there there have been a few so far that uh that we would. And oh. not just because Sammy and I are horny for everybody. Oh. But that doesn't hurt. I mean No, definitely not. I mean Miranda Richardson and Sleepy Hollow. Mm. Dead. Dead. Yep. I, I'm dead. Dead. I I didn't get sent to horny jail. I got sent to horny hell. <laughs> well, you should look up demon hole while you're in horny hell because it's a it's the hell's number one uh, match <laughs> app. Yeah. <laughs> Catch me on demon hole. My name there is Everson Hole. <laughs> uh, so where can where can they find the podcast? Uh, I know you mentioned. Uh, Bloody FM. Are you also on Instagram or? Yes. Okay. So on Instagram, you can find us at the Lady Killers Pod, where if you interact with the account, that'll be Sammy. If you interact with our Twitter, which is the Lady K Pod, you'll be talking to me. And we're both sassy, we're both fun, and we love fun horror memes. So please feel free to send them our way. Mm-hmm. And you can find me at Everson Poe, not Everson Hole. Everson Poe, E V E R S O N P O E, on all social media. And you can find my music at EversonPoe.bandcamp.com. Oh, hell yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much for being here, May. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, you know, I've known you you folks for a little while from horror trivia. I've won twice. And got you second place it. once and third place once. You're you're always up there on the podium. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's always a good time. So I'm I'm really glad that I got to come on. So thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. It was, was it? so great. 
to meet you in the circumstances that we have and yeah. we have this. Because <laughs> this is what it's all about, really. Just building the community. I mean, yeah. when Leslie and I started this, it kind of was just built off of our love for horror and yep. the fact that we found another person who really likes it. And through this podcast, we found so many more people that love horror now. Oh, yeah. Horror? So it's just horror. horror. Um, <laughs> so it's just great to, you know, make it really full circle and um, bring in you know, people including yourself that love horror too and just build this horror community even bigger. I oh, just want to sure. ask this question before <laughs> before we end it. Um, how do you feel about have, having someone that can fucking keep up with you? Because I'm terrible with names and I haven't watched all these films. <laughs> so, I mean, in my, in my perspective, I've enjoyed having you also just kind of you guys are just like <laughs> just throwing stuff out there and i'm just like this is awesome <laughs> and you're right in the middle of it i yeah. am <laughs> literally and I, i'm okay with that i joke that i'm like a walking wikipedia i just retain information you do and it's a blessing and a curse because sometimes i'll be watching something i'll pull a piece of trivia out and people will look at me like i don't care yeah and then i go oh okay i don't want to watch movies with you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not fun anymore you can always throw trivia stuff at us yes, excellent yeah. please yes that's yeah. that's what i enjoy too and um it's great to have um a sounding board in leslie <laughs> i love it um but yes thank you again for being here yep. um yeah leslie. um i'll get us out of here um you can follow me on color me leslie and me at bp pretty t and us at the Deadlights Pod. Mm -hmm. uh, but until next time, until we go to camp, <laughs> let's get spooky. Ooh. We're going beyond the door into something. And I ain't coming back. <laughs> we ain't coming back. <laughs>